there guys, so in this next video we're going to talk about how to remove copyright uh, info on your model. So uh, on Peter Stone, a lot of Peter Stones, they do not use um, like a piece that they made that they stick on top which you can sand down. Peter Stone actually takes something and they put it into plastic. Uh, Usually it's in the mold itself when they are making um, duplicates of the mold into plastic. Um, they usually sculpt it into the model prior to that or uh, somewhere along the line um, for their copyright information. So this one says copyright uh, CMW L uh, Lick Peter Stone Company 1999. So of course, you know, that's a big eyesore because it's huge and it goes all the way down the leg. It's like ridiculous. Um, so now the problem with these type of uh, copyright is is that there's only a couple ways that you can get rid of them. They're very hard to sand down uh, because they are inside the plastic. They're not above the plastic where you can just you know sand down. Um, this has actually been melted into the plastic, um, so it is very hard to sand down. Now, of course, with briars, they're very easy because you just get a, some sandpaper or a file and just sand them down and you're done. You don't have to worry anymore. But in this case, it's not how this works. Um, and the easiest way to do this would to um, get a Dremel and Dremel this out. But the problem is, is that if you do that, it makes the plastic very thin in that one area. Um, I've seen it where people have done that and the plastic is super thin and over time because plastic does uh, you know, constrict and it will blow out that one area. So um, what we need to do is we are actually going to put some epoxy sculpt over this area and smooth it in because it's just too much trouble to do the Dremel as well um, and I do not want that area to become any more weak than what it is. Now you won't need a lot of epoxy sculpt if you need to know how to mix epoxy sculpt, where to buy it and so forth, please refer to my other tutorial on epoxy sculpt. Um, find it in my videos. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do that one area of his leg because it is a very bad eyesore and of course real horses don't have copyrights on their legs. Um, now we can actually remove that without getting in trouble because we are customizing it. Um, which means that we are not claiming that the paint job is ours or the mold is ours, but we are claiming the, co uh, the custom work done on this model. So that is why people could get away with it without a lot of people getting mad. Um, I know that several people ask, well, why don't you get in trouble when you're you know, messing up somebody else's work? Well, it doesn't work like that. A lot of these horses are mass produced, um, especially the molds, and there is hundreds and hundreds of them. I mean, God, you know how many molds there are of this quarter horse? It's supposed to be a halter horse, but not very good halter horse. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, it just it, they're mass produced, and there's no reason to worry about getting into trouble with customizing a model. A lot of companies actually like to see one of their molds turned into something spectacular. Now of course if you were to take this horse and make copies of it then yes you would get in trouble for that. But for customizing you don't have to worry about it. So I've got my epoxy sculpt here. I'm pretty happy. It's thoroughly mixed pretty good. Um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to take a small amount of it and we're going to press it into the area. Now, you don't need a whole lot of this. 
you just need enough just to cover it. A very thin amount works just fine. Um, we'll do the blending here in a minute, but we got to get this on first. And only use the epoxy sculpt which is necessary. You don't want to have to spend a long time sanding. So the thinner it is, the better. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our water and let me get some here because mine is dried out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our water and we're going to start smoothing this into the mold itself. Now, of course, you know, you will have to do some re-sanding on this mold. That's why I generally don't do any prep work prior to doing any epoxy because I know that I'm just going to have to come back in and, you know, re-sand the areas and re-smooth areas out so and then of course you know you just you got to smooth it out into all the muscles make sure it looks nice and flat and the areas that need to be curved are curved and So you can see there um, that it's nice and smooth and it looks really good. And of course, you know when that dries, you will have to sand that area down, um, make sure it's super smooth, get along the edges really well, um, and you should be set to go. And um, you know, the epoxy sculpt will take several hours to harden to the touch, but it takes overnight to officially harden. Um, for sanding. So uh, thanks for watching guys. If you have any further questions, let me know.